Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel and another video in the series covering the servicing of this Suzuki King Quad 500 AXI. Now in previous videos I've mentioned that we thought it was a 2020 model, it's not, it's actually a 2019 just for clarification. Okay, on this video, we're going to do the valve clearances, and that involves removing some of the plastics. But first, let's take a quick look at the service manual and see what Suzuki have to say about this particular task. Here we go. Used. Now, Suzuki say that the valve clearance check and or adjustment should be done uh, initially on the first 200 kilometers, 100 miles, and then about every 2,000 kilometers, 1,200 miles thereafter. The valve clearance adjustment must be checked and adjusted A, at the time of periodic service, and B, when the valve mechanism is serviced, and C, when the camshafts are removed for servicing. Now, we need to remove the front inner fender left and right. Well, they're both already out of this bike uh, because I've done some other work on it, as you've seen on the videos. Um, it also says to remove the side cover left and right and engine side cover. Okay, we can do that. Uh, that's in section 9D6. Um, um, move the throttle body backwards. Refer to throttle body removal and installation 1D. Okay, we can work that one out, that's easy. And then we've got to remove the recoil cover. This bike doesn't have a pull start, it's only got electric starts, just for reference. Remove the spark plug cap and spark plug. Well, this has got two spark plugs, we found that out in a previous video. Now, the valve clearance is to be checked when the engine is cold. That's extremely important. The intake and exhaust valves must be checked and adjusted when the piston is at top dead center TDC of the compression stroke. Okay, so we'll get those panels removed and then we'll get the engine crankshaft position set so we can get this, uh, these valve clearances adjusted. Now, one of the panels we need to remove is this side panel here. The top panel that covers the air filter box has already been removed because I did the air filter on one of the previous videos. Right, at this end it just clips into place, at the other end we've got a little push pin so we'll uh, focus on that and get that pulled out. I hate these little things, they're a, <laughs> a real pain to get out sometimes. <laughs> this one doesn't look any, any different. You just got to ease them up, they get full of mud, this is the problem and they get really stiff to pop that centerpiece out. There's probably a real trick to them, but I haven't found it yet. That might be enough. Right, a pair of snippers. Not that I'm going to cut it, I'm just going to use those to get underneath. There we go, look. Perfect. That'll do. Now, if all goes to plan, we should be able to pull that off now. Nice. <laughs> How the hell did that get in there? Now, come on, mister. There we go. Right. So, a couple of little poppers down here on rubber grommets and some various clips around the outside. So, that's now out of the way. Okay. I reckon we've got to take the airbox out, but. The manual didn't say that. Right, I'll get the other cover taken off. Now, with this cover, we've also got a 12 volt output, pretty rusty 12 volt output by the looks of it. So there's gonna be some wires to, to uh, disconnect as well. Well, that was already off, look at that. Okay, how much room have we got? Jeez, not a lot. Oh, there we go, perfect. Okay, let's get that, uh, that unplugged. Oh, there we go. 
Excellent. Pretty sure I'm right. So the manual doesn't say this, but we need to remove the air box just up there from the bike, and then we can get the throttle body out of the way. And then we can gain access to the intake valve. It's basically underneath the throttle body. Exhaust valve's not too bad. Now, I may also, off camera, remove the entire front end of this bike because I've got some work to do. Where basically, it's had an accident. It's got bent at the front somehow, and the headlight is misaligned and is the front plastic. So one of the brackets supporting the front plastics has got bent during the impact. It's gonna make it a lot easier for me filming. But first, let's get that airbox taken out and take a look and see how easy that throttle body is to remove. Oakley Oakley. Okay, the airbox is held in by three bolts, one, two, and another one under this flap at the front. So we'll get those pulled out, and then we've got a, a clamp to undo off the throttle body, which is hiding underneath. That'll be fun to get to. In. It's not! We need an extension bar. Excellent. Right, it's good and loose now. Okay, we've got uh, a couple of bits to do hiding underneath. I'll show you. Okay, so we've got that uh, hose clamp to undo and this little spring clamp off the breather pipe as well. I might just be able to get in there with the camera as it is, or I'll move you a little bit. Looks like I have a bit of dirt in the screw head. Let's make sure it's all clear before we can get in there. If it wasn't over tight, to be fair. You need a long screwdriver for this one. There we go, that should do the trick. Right, just that little clip to take off now. around the camera as always that might be enough let's have a go be very careful not to drop dirt down the throttle body there we go fantastic that should come off now Oh, we've got one more pipe on the other side. Jeez, Suzuki. Okay, before we go any further, I'm just gonna put a plastic piece of plastic over that throttle body. Really don't want any dirt going down there. That would be really, really bad. So we can just, in fact, that just drops out of the way, look. We'll deal with that in a second. Let's get this bag sorted out. Better be safe than sorry, I think, don't you? Cool, peace of mind. Okay, now we can get in and remove that other pipe. Hopefully, we've got to see what's going on. Oh, there we go, look, not too bad. Working around the camera, as always. Jeez. They don't make them, oh, there we go, right. Now, the intake valve is located, the tappet cover is located directly underneath and slightly forward of the throttle body. That's got to come out, bugger. So, the throttle body is held in place by yet again another clamp, which is just down there, look. So, fingers crossed, we can get in and get that slackened off. Man, that was not tight. That was not tight at all. Jeez. We have some stuff to disconnect as well, otherwise we're not gonna get it all pulled far enough away. 
we've got the idle speed control valve just here look six wire there we go right that's that unplugged okay anything else we need to unplug let's just give it a go yes we're going to need to move the what looks like a TPS as well throttle position sensor let's unplug that and obviously make sure the ignition's turned off when you're doing this kind of stuff otherwise you're going to flag loads of fault codes okay let's also unplug the injector jeez heaps of stuff to unplug wow it's a massive bit of wiring harness going on for two little wires there we go right is that move that pipe out of the way is that going to be enough no got one more to oh throttle cable okay so we're going to need to undo the fuel line then so the throttle body can go forwards right how are we going to do that ah but the same as on the fuel tank so we're going to pull those two in and pull that back watch out for the fuel pressure it's probably going to squirt a little bit yep there we go look right that's now unplugged and now the throttle body can just go over to one side out of the way now before we go any further because in there needs to stay nice and clean and yes this bike has been washed extensively problem is you just can't get to everything uh, let's take that Let's just take that clamp off. Wow, that really is asking for trouble, isn't it? That, uh, that intake straight down into the valves. Wow. I'm going to see that a bit of a clean. There's actually dirt around the outside lip. So I need to spray that and wipe that off. Bugger. Before I can do that, I'm going to put a rag down the intake just to stop any dirt going down as I'm cleaning it. It's like chicken and egg, isn't it? Jeez, honestly. There we are, that'll work. Right, bit of cleaner. Be so careful these vertical intakes. Once it's in, it's in, isn't it? It's too late then. Right, let's just put a bag over that as well, just to make sure we don't get any more or any dirt going down there. Extra protection. There we go, nothing's going down there now. And we can see here, quite clearly, the uh, the tappet cover for the intake valve. Right, that's dirty around there as well, isn't it? Let's give that a good clean. A bit of a wire brush, I would say. I might even, I'm tempted to, to move this harness as well out of the way. Just to give us a bit more room. <laughs> it's full of mud. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Clip, you can do it. Oh, that's a lot better. Easy. Right, I'll get a zip tie to hold that up out of the way. And then we can get in there and give it a good clean. Right, let's give it a spray first. And that can be uh, dissolving the dirt. very important these days you know when you work on an engine that you try and work as clean as you possibly can you don't want to introduce any foreign bodies into the engine interior it can cause some real problems further down the line and okay 
you know, it might not bite you on the ass, but it's going to bite somebody on the ass. Now the exhaust valve tappet cover isn't too hard to get to at all. Uh, it might be hard to see what we're going to be doing, but it's not hard to get to. Uh, but it's also filthy, so I'll give that a really good clean, and then we'll take a quick look in the service manual to find out how to set the crankshaft position and get the camshaft in the correct place for valve clearance adjustment. So with both tappet covers now totally clean, and one of those little brass wire brushes is really good for that, we can now take a quick look in the service manual and see what's next. Here we go. Oakley Oakley. Right, throttle body is dealt with. We've moved that completely out of the way, which is, I think, the best idea. I remove the recoil cover. That's on the left-hand side of the engine, so we're going to do that next. Easy job, I reckon. That's one. Two, three, four. Right, that's what we need. We can turn the crankshaft with that. So what's next on the list? Let's have a look. Uh, remove the spark plug cap and spark plug. Well, there's two spark plugs, but we just need to remove one because we want to stop the compression building up within the cylinder. That means we can set the crankshaft to exactly the right position. Now, in a previous video, I've changed the spark plugs, so I won't show you this bit. If you need to know how to get to the spark plugs and replace them, it's in that video. Right, spark plug is out. So, let's take a look, see what's next. Okay, remove the valve timing inspection plug. That's down at the bottom, the left-hand side of the cylinder, and there's a pipe that runs close to it. Let's go and find that. Holy moly, this engine's filthy, isn't it? Right, that is the pipe, so we can move that out of the way. I'll find a zip tie, something just to hold that for us, so it's out of the way of the camera. That's the the, uh, the prize, the plug that we need. So we need to give it a bit of a clean first, don't we? Okay, cover your ears. Looks like another clean-up job to me. Let's give it another wire brush. Again, we don't want dirt getting in. We just can't have that. God, you spend half your life cleaning stuff on these bikes. Cover your ears. Now, what size is that? Looks like about an 8mm Allen key. Let's have a look. It is fantastic. <laughs> Bloody hell, that was tight. There we go, and not to lose the washer as well. Super job. Hmm, what's next? Right, turn the crankshaft until the piston reaches TDC on the compression stroke by slowly pulling the recall starter up. We haven't got one of those. Uh, pull the recall starter up until the line three on the generator rotor is aligned with mark four on the crankcase. There you go, look, there's a bit of a zoomy in picture for you. Now, obviously, that's on the crankshaft, and the camshaft turns at half the speed of the crank, so that's why they stress it needs to be on the compression stroke. So we also need to make sure we're on the compression stroke. Um, easiest way to tell, actually, is there should be some clearance on the valves at that point. 
Next job is to remove those tappet covers. Right, so that's the intake one out of the way. Oh, it's got two intake valves. Even better. A little bit harder to film this one. Jeez, that's tight. Now for the easy side. It's actually not that hard, I'm just trying to work around the camera for you. There we go. Job done. It's off! And two exhaust valves as well! Woo! -hoo! Right, so I'm rotating the, uh, the crankshaft anti-clockwise as you look at the engine casing. And we're going to see if we can find that mark. Oh, that's pretty good, isn't it? Right, back a fraction. Right, so let's go and make sure we're on the, uh, the compression stroke where the cams will be in, or the lobes on the cams will be in the off cam position. So we should have a little bit of movement on the rockers. Here we go. So there should be some movement if we're on the compression stroke. If I lift those up and down, we should feel some movement. And those are tight, which means we need to turn the crankshaft another 360 degrees. Right, 360 degrees counterclockwise on the crankshaft. Here we come. Shouldn't be too far off. There we go. Look. Oh, overshot as usual. That'll do grommet. Right, let's check those valves. Okay, intake valves first. Man, I can't feel any movement on those. Golly gosh, that's tiny. Okay, let's check the exhaust valves. Yes, we have clearance. We're at the top of the compression stroke. Excellent. Right, let's take a quick look in the manual to see what the specs are for these valve clearances. Right, said Fred. Here we go. Right, the valve clearances are, make it nice and big for you, when cold, which the engine is, it's not being started at all today, intake should be 0.05 millimeters to 0.1. That's quite low, actually. Uh, the exhaust is 0.17 to 0.22 millimeters. Let's do the intake valves first, because they might need some adjustment. So the minimum clearance on the intake valves is 0.05 millimeters. I've got a little tiny feeler gauge here, 0 0.05, and we'll take a look and see where we're at with these. I think they're a bit tight. I could be wrong, because 0 0.05 isn't very much. And you just basically pop the feeler gauge between the end of the adjuster screw and the top of the valve, when you can see what you're doing. There we are. That one actually has got... Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Oh, I'm going to do it from the side. 
So just popping the feeler gauge through between the valve adjuster and the top of the valve, which is easier said than done with a little fiddly gauge like this. I'm trying to not block the camera at the same time. There we go, look. So that one actually has, it's above minimum clearance, which is a, a good thing. Now the other side, hopefully you can see that. Let's see what this one's like. Jeez. Come on, Mr. Feeler Gage, you can do it. Now that one, that one's tight. Yes, that won't go through. So we need to adjust the left hand intake valve. Now the maximum clearance is 0.1 of a millimeter, 0 0.1. So let's just check that on that right hand one and make sure we're under 0.1. If we are, we can leave that one alone. Right, she's a bit bent this one, but we'll give it a go. Okay, 0 0.1 millimeter going in on that right hand one. Oh, dirt going in there, look. That's not good, is it? That's just dropping off the frame. To clean that out. So if this doesn't go through, that's a good thing. And it doesn't. Right, that's tight. Excellent. Okay, so we don't need to make any adjustments to the right-hand intake valve, but we do need to, uh, to increase the clearance slightly on the left-hand intake valve. Before I continue, I'm just going to clean off the top of this bike because we're getting some dirt dropping down into the valves. That's bad. Right, all cleaned up. Should be no more debris dropping down now. Okay, so we're going to need a spanner. It looks like an 8mm by the looks of it. And uh, I've got a special tool that actually clips on top of the adjuster. If you haven't got that, then you can use a pair of long nose pliers. It'll only need a very small amount of adjustment. Now, obviously, filming this is not the easiest thing at all. So I'm just going to crack off that lock nut. And it looks like they've never been adjusted before because they're still, they're still lined up with the pen marks from in the factory. Jeez, there we go. Okay, lock nut is undone. We've got our 0.1 feeler gauge. And I did turn the adjuster slightly. Well, it turned with the nut, to be fair. But still not enough. Right, so I'm working through the wheel arch just so you guys can see what to do. So I'm just going to put that feeler gauge in. I've opened up the gap. So that should fit in there quite happily now. Surely. Yes, he's in there now. Okay, I'm just going to close that up gingerly. So it's just snugged up and I'm going to just tighten up the long nut. There we go. Right, so let's see how we're doing. My hands are not really designed for valve clearances. That's actually very, very good. That's slight drag on the 0.1 feeler gauge. There you go. Okay, let's just tweak up that lock nut. Uh, hopefully the adjuster bolt won't move. If it does, I can put my special tool back on there and hold it, but I think it should be all right. There we go. That should be enough. Let's see how, if that's changed how that feeler gauge feels. No, that's bang on. I'm very happy with that. Now, the question is, do we adjust the right-hand one to the same, to 0.1? We 
It should do really because that's going to mean it's going to last the longest and both of them will then require adjustment pretty much at the same time in the future. Let's do that. Seems we're here, why not? Right, I'm just going to crack off the lock nut. There we go, lock nut is cracked. Special tool going in. There we go. Hopefully you can still see what's going on. And this time you're probably going to get nothing but hand, but you've seen it done. Okay, feeler gauge is in. Okay, that's just touching. Just take the, uh, the lock nut back round again. Remove special tool does make it a lot easier with that little wheel for turning the adjuster, I must admit. Okay, now, how does that feel? That feels pretty good, actually. Let's just give it a nip off. Right, ring spanner in this time. Give it a tweak. Make sure the adjuster doesn't move. There we go. Sorry, you probably couldn't see that bit. Yep, I'm absolutely fine with that. That feels really, really good. Excellent. Intake valve clearance is done. Woohoo, we're halfway there. <laughs> On the clearance adjustment, that is. Now, the next thing to do is to refit that valve, that tappet cover. What we don't want is debris going in there. Very, very conscious of that kind of problem uh, when you're working on these farm bikes. It doesn't matter how much you seem to wash them, there's always still some dirt in all the wrong places. Now, I did mark up, just in case they're different, don't think they are, I did mark up the tappet covers, and we've got a brand new O-ring to go in the groove on the tappet cover. So I'll give this a bit of a clean up, we'll fit the new O-ring, and then we'll slap this back on. And there'll be a torque setting for those bolts somewhere. We'll have to find that, won't we? Right, old seal out, or old O-ring. And these things cost a few cents, there's no point in skipping it. Put new ones in, people. Right, give it a bit of a clean. Right, we'll just whiz round inside that. What the hell's that stuff? Grease, maybe? Assembly grease could be. We'll just whiz round that groove with a rag. Just make sure it's nice and clean. A little flat screwdriver and a rag is perfect for this job. There we go. There's another bit of that, um, that stuff there, look. We'll have rid of that. There we go. Okay, just clean out the inside. Make sure there's no dirt in there. Excellent. Right, said Fred. The new seal. In it goes. Now, what doesn't help is the fact that there's nothing to stop that seal from falling out when I turn the cover over. Normally, when manufacturers you know pay attention to this kind of stuff, they put little indents either side, almost opposite each other, that sort of nip the O-ring and just hold it in place while you're refitting it. That isn't the case with this. So, that's probably why Suzuki used a little bit of assembly grease. So I'll grab a little bit of rubber grease and we'll stick some grease in there and that'll hold that O-ring in place whilst I refit the cover. Okay, now we don't need very much, to be honest, and it doesn't need to be all the way around. So we'll stick a bit in there, look. And probably too much in that bit, so we'll stick him some over there. And we'll stick some, not enough, we'll stick some over there as well, look. 
Okay, that should do the trick just long enough to hold that seal in position whilst we lower the cover onto the engine. We could even give it a test. Right, is it going to fall out? No. Perfect. There we go. Excellent stuff. Right, first bolt back in. <laughs> Working under the wheel arch doing this. Just so you can see what's going on. There we go. Love the job. Right, what we need now is a torque setting. Okay, does it give us a torque setting for those bolts? What's going on there? Valve clearance adjuster lock nut, that's the nut on the actual adjuster on the valve, on the, rock, on the rocker, is 10 newton meters, just for reference. Now, uh, here we go, look, so inspect they've done that. Uh, always use new o rings, we've done that. Tighten the valve timing inspection cap bolts to specify torque. The torque is 10 newton meters. Excellent. Let's do that now. 10 newton meters. It's pretty standard for an M6 bolt, to be fair. Just doing them up evenly so that we don't, uh, you know. The cover wants to fit parallel. That's the thing. So just bring them up to talk evenly. There we go. Right. Wait for it. Wait for it. That's 10. And that's 10. Excellent, that's that one done. Right, time for the exhaust valves. Okay, so exhaust valve clearance, just to refresh ourselves, is 0.17 to 0.22 of a millimeter. Well, we definitely have some clearance, we could feel that and we could even hear it when we checked it. So let's go and find out what we've actually got. Here we go. <laughs> you won't believe how much many bits and pieces I had to take off to get this shot for you. Okay, so I've got a 0.2 millimeter. Uh, feeling gauge. Remember the specs 0.17 to 0.22. Let's just see if this is going to fit in. I haven't checked it yet. This is all real time. Oh, well, that's in. That's a little bit tight. Actually, it's That's actually not bad. There's a good drag on this. It's definitely above 0.17, probably about uh, 0.19 actually. So that doesn't warrant being adjusted. That one is good. That's the right hand one as you sat on the bike. Now for the one that I can't really see very well. Hopefully you can see a lot better than I can. Just shout out to the screen whether it needs to be up, down, left, or right. There we go. Oh, that feels equally as good. Excellent. In that case, there's no adjustment required on the exhaust valves. Super. Woohoo! Well, that's great news. No adjustment needed on those exhaust valves. I reckon they're about 0.19, so they're still well within spec. And by the looks of it, they're going to be a real pain to adjust. Difficult to get in, difficult to see what you're doing. A lot of gubbins in the way on those bikes. So, last job, I think, for this video is to refit this cover, and then we'll do a summary. Here we go. Right, let's quick clean round, make sure we're all good. There we go. Oakley, Oakley. Right, let's pop that on there. 
There we go. That's about right, isn't it? Now, where's the other bolt? There he is. Torque wrench time! Woo! Right, 10 Newton meters again. Wait for it, wait for it. Ten. Ten. Job done. So there you go, a video covering how to do the valve clearances on a 2019 Suzuki King Quad 500 AXI. What a mouthful. It's one with the power steering. Anyway, I could show you putting the whole thing back together, but basically it's exactly the same as I took it apart, just in the reverse order. You know, don't get any dirt down the intake on the head. Don't get dirt in the throttle body. Don't get dirt inside the valve train. Otherwise, it's going to cause premature wear. It's like grinding paste, isn't it? You know, it gets in there and it's abrasive and just work, work tidy. You know, think about what's going on. And look after the customer's vehicle. That's my uh, my motto. Okay, crew. Well, if you enjoyed this video, uh, don't forget there's lots of other videos in the same series covering other service work on this particular bike. Why not click on the subscribe button, ring the bell, and that way you won't miss out on any new videos. If a week goes by and a new video isn't posted, don't panic. There's about 550 other videos in the archives. So have a mooch around. I'm sure there's something else there that you'll, you'll enjoy watching. Now, you'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. My email address is down in the description too, so you can email me directly. And yes, it's me that answers the emails. Now, if you'd like to support the channel and donations are gratefully received, you can do that through Patreon. Become a patron to the channel. There's a link on the homepage. Uh, and you can also use PayPal, same email address, Andy Mechanic at live.co.uk. Who knows? I might even give you a shout out. Okay, crew. Well, until next time, cheers. Over and out. And we get the up again. Oh. Thank <laughs> you.